Hey guys, Gavin Simon. Today we're gonna to talk about tinting. Tinting is something that's actually really important on color and black and white photos. And I've been getting some questions about it lately after doing updates to things like my emulsion, platinum, and cyanotype actions, etc. But it's not just for black and white. Today I'm gonna to show you a bit of the crossover between tinting and color and how it relates to our contrast and our shadows in both color and black and white photography and give you some tips. Tinting of photos goes way back. In the film days, it could be done with filters. We could put a warming or a cooling filter. Uh, we would use all these things on color and black and white to create, create a look. Some of them were early processes, but a platinum process, for example, lets us kind of get that warm platinum tone that was done in, in the darkroom. And so on the one hand, I'm creating that with my emulsion for actions and trying to make it really, really authentic. And a lot of you use those actions and some of you may be making those effects manually. Those effects come out way better in Photoshop because we can do more complex toning. Of course, the other side of that is like color grading or split toning in Lightroom and Capture One. Split toning, selenium bath kind of looks in a Lightroom side of things. Now, those tend to be a little bit less nuanced and more basic, and that's why usually if I want like a platinum look, I'll go into Photoshop. But what about using this on color? And somebody recently asked me this question. They're like, well, I watched your video on using emulsion, but can we do these kind of like a platinum look, for example, on a color photo? And the answer is yes. In fact, when I originally created emulsion, this is something I did. So if I go into Photoshop here and I run the Emulsion Classic Base, right? And after that, as I've showed you in recent videos, you can mix it to cyanotype, wet plate, etc. But here is the base look for a platinum. And then I can turn the tones up and down. I have all these options and layers and controls. One of the reasons Emulsion works so good is because it's using a gradient map approach where we can do these really complex tonalities, whether they're platinum or selenium, etc., and they're based on the tone. And then it applies that on the top. That means anything done underneath is kind of adaptively built upon. That is to say, if we adjust the dynamic range of our base layer, the tonal map that we made adjusts accordingly. And these gradient maps are something I use in emulsion. They're something I use in my black room actions. In my opinion, they're the best way to do more advanced toning and black and white in Photoshop, and so I integrate those into my stuff. And some of you guys may be using those manually. There's lots of videos on YouTube about doing black and white with a gradient map. And I don't promote it a lot because when I make emulsion, it's mostly for these traditional black and white chemical effects. But this layer here is actually just converting to monochrome. If you just turn the monochrome saturation layer off, you can see we now have a color layer. And of course, the more intense you make the platinum look in this case, the more monochrome it's going to become, right? But if I take this layer and turn it down to say 40%, I get this kind of in-between range. I can do all of this. Now that that layer's off, I could switch it to cyanotype, for example, and I have this color cyanotype. I could turn the whole emotion group up and down, obviously starting with a color image instead of a black and white image in this case. But here's the thing, I could mix all of these. So I could add the dynamic range base mod to this, which would affect the color and tone, and it would add the respective layers for that. And I could say, no, switch this to a wet plate look, right? And it's doing all of the effects that go along with this, giving me these really interesting mixes. Now this can work on streets, it can work on portraits, landscapes, etc. Do I do this a lot? No, because a lot of times if I say, no, I want a platinum look, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make a platinum look. And you can get a lot of cool color effects in, in Lightroom. You can tweak those sliders, you can play with Capture One and color grading. I do this in, in my Filmus presets, I do this in my natural HDR presets, I do this in the videos I show you. All of this works together. So if I go here to a color image, I think this was processed in Filmus, and I say, no, run the platinum look on this, it's gonna run the platinum look, and by default it takes away the color, right? But if I again just go down and turn off this monochrome layer, you can see now I have this platinum tonality, the complexity of the platinum tonality. We're creating contrast and atmosphere. Don't edit forever just because. But even when we selected a film, each one gave us a different interpretation in the way that came out. Now here, I've gone to Filmist and I put like an Agfa Flex Vista on here, okay? It looks good on this street scene. But I could actually go down and say, no, I'm gonna go to silver. I don't wanna black and white. I'm just gonna go to the silver tone presets and I'm gonna mix up the tone a little bit to give me a different feel. 
but let's roll back. Let's take just the original film as process. I think I used some, some elegance in the sky and things like that, and then just run a platinum on this. I'm going to go down and I'm going to turn off the monochrome layer. And so you can see I have now this coming through. Let's actually switch this to a cyanotype right here. Now this is pretty intense because the cyanotype is an intense process. And so I could turn down the options, the master tint adjuster, et cetera, on this to let more color through. There's actually another trick I could do if I went down to my base layer, my base point layer here, which was created by emulsion, I could actually drag that up to the very top. So I could put this in emulsion, but over the top of everything else. Now notice how everything comes through. And I could switch this to color mode, right? And then adjust the opacity of that accordingly. So look what's happening now. I'm getting this kind of cyanotype effect, the cyanotype level of density and tone. All the layers down here that emulsion created are still relevant, but uh, rather than just a basic opacity, I'm restoring after all that, the color back to the amount I want. So I can get this kind of really interesting color image, but that's also mixed with the nuances and the subtle tinting of the cyanotype. Now, if you guys really enjoy using the emulsion chemicals like this on color, I might even create some mod actions within Emulsion 4 to automate these processes. So let me know if you think that's interesting. Let's take this to another point, because in all my videos, I'm always talking about shadow hacking. If you haven't been to my Shadow Hackers Workshop, I'll put a link below, come for free, because it'll it'll completely change your game. Shadow hacking, contrast, how contrast isn't just a slider, it's about shadows and tone. Now let's go back to Lightroom for a sec, because this can be done in reverse. Let's take a photo like this that I actually edited with black room actions to get a very complex kind of black and white look, but I haven't done a platinum look or anything like this. I have some users that, for for example, will go into the develop and they'll use then color presets. I have one colleague that swears by Belladonna presets on his black and white photo. And because Belladonna presets are a lot of kind of these color mixes, he'll go in and he'll take a black and white photo and then use the Belladonna presets to do a lot of different tones and contrasts and variants. Of course, these are normally used as color presets, but if you do them on a black and white, all you're getting is the contrast and the color grading toning coming out of them. Some people might say, oh no, you shouldn't tone your images, you should have natural images. The thing is, there's, there's really no such thing as a natural image. A Fuji camera sees color different than your eyes see it, different than a Sony, different than a Canon. And so when we process those, it's really all about creating our vision, our visualization here. In the film days, we use warm filters, we use cool filters. Film was mostly daylight balanced, and so what we saw with our eyes often had no relationship to what came out on the film. Don't get stuck in these norms. It's fine if you say, hey, I'm a landscape photographer, I want kind of pure, real scenes, that's fine. But there's no such thing as actually this is the pure color. Even my eyes and your eyes see color differently. So don't get so hung up on purism and technicalities that you forget to be creative with your tones, with your color grade. I made a black and white photo in Photoshop, but now I'm gonna add like an extra layer of tonality of tinting and tone to get exactly the feel I want. So I have people that take Belladonna presets and do this. You can go over to color grading, of course, and you can do this manually in shadows, highlights, etc. You can do the same in Capture One. There's so many ways to do this. And of course, I'll often use something like silver if I'm just doing a basic tone, because in silver I can convert to black and white and the tones are actually separate mod presets where I can just add a tone. And color is a way to create contrast. And color can work that way in a color photo, but it can also work as subtle hues because the way you have color mixing also leads the eye and creates separation between objects, it creates depths, and that actually crosses over to black and white. So don't think when you shoot black and white, it's all just black and white. In the dark room, when we make a selenium print, we're adding kind of this very subtle, cool chemical tone. Each chemical had their different look. In digital, each sensor has its different look. And the way we process each preset, each action, each approach we take to an edit has a different look. The shadows are letting you see the light, the contrast, the dimension, and the drama of your scene. They're letting you see 
the light that you have in your scene and you can manipulate those in so many different ways. So I'm just saying with this video experiment, some people were asking me about this in terms of my emulsion actions, but it really doesn't matter what you're editing with. These concepts are going to work. Just play around. If, if, it, if it works, use it. If it doesn't, try something new and, and that's how we grow. Okay, guys, hope you found this useful. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.